just fit and some days just a 64th of an inch boy is it my lucky day it is now i've got just the right amount of wire show wire or coat hanger wire something every modeler has plenty of around now today like every day that we uh work in the shop we have a couple hours to work in the shop but we really don't have enough time right now to go for some break-in miles because we have my grandson coming over to see me and I'm not sure if he's bored with me or what but he's beating the pants off me in Monopoly every day but anyway I did have a couple little things I wanted to do this morning they may be things that are worthwhile I, I have a I need to hook up the wire that I can recharge the battery without taking off the seat and that wire also serves as my for the radar detector but I haven't even put the radar detector on here because I'm doing break-in miles and I still have a lot to go but I'm gonna to try to get some some real nice rides what I've been trying to do is stay off the main roads stay in the back roads do some nice carry speed through the corners to make it interesting but always be in a gear or two higher I tried the A mode I, I can tell this is gonna be a, a lot of fun once I get this break-in over with I got a couple gallons of brand new Yamalu and I ordered from Partzilla a bunch of oil filters for this bike. It has a unique filter that's different than the ones I already have in stock. So we're going to have some action this morning. Not sure we're going to have any time to do a ride this afternoon unless something changes in our personal life. Now every one of the bikes is unique, but they all have a wire that ultimately goes to, well I keep them on charge of course, so they're all ready to go. and that I can connect my radar detector power to. Now, each one is different. Sometimes it's so annoying. You have to take the gas tank off to get the wire underneath there. I don't know. Every one is different. Some like the GS, you can just route the wire under the tank. I won't know until I see where this wire is going to go, if it's going to be a little bit more of a job than I want. Or some like the FZR, got to take the tank off to get that wire in there reliably. And one little tip I would just suggest if you have one of these jumper wires, here's, here's the fuse that's in, an inline fuse and I always tape an extra fuse right to it. So if I know if I blow this fuse on the road, I can change the fuse. And what that's going to allow me to do then is still have a radar detector for the rest of the day. And boy, as I've ridden out Route 80 out into my riding area, <laughs> riding without a radar detector, holy mackerel. I, I really do feel naked sometimes. I'm naked on a naked bike. How cool. Anyway, I have, while I'm talking about it, I have looked on, and this is really a, more of a problem I thought it would be, I have looked at every windscreen, even the ones made in France, and none of them really make me, make me happy. So I don't know what, if I'm going to be able to create something here, a carbon fiber. Of course, I made my own unique carbon fiber parts for that because none are available. So... Make it a carbon fiber part for you. Might be a winter project. And I'm, mm. the other thing is, and I wanted to pass this information on. I, I as I looked at that, and the more I think about it, the more this is going to be a winter project. Replacing the tail light up here. Look, because you have to make a bushing, and because you have that, the axle adjuster is down there. The so I don't know that this is going to be more complicated, and I don't want to compromise it in any way. So. I'm not sure, and that what's happened is, as I've looked at it on the videos on YouTube, I think some of them look worse with the plate up top than down the bottom, but I don't know. That's all, that all may change in the future. Or if somebody comes up with a brilliant idea of how to get that in there without making too much of a problem. But I know you do need that bushing down there. Before you take this all apart, I want to think this through. Another thing I've tried to figure out is, and I don't know yet, because what's going to happen is I need to get the spools, and they're supposed to come today. You need to put the spools on, and these are 6 millimeter. They come 8 and 10. So on a bike like, some of the bikes take 8s, some of them take 10s, but I know all the Yamahas take 6. Those spools come today that I can jack the back wheel up and maybe show my, uh, on a, maybe today or tomorrow, how I would go about polishing this back wheel. Now, it's going to be a unique thing to polish. Because this part is obviously they've run a machine over it. This part is cast. I know you're not going to be able to polish that. But I know I'll be able to get a nice shine. Even if this is powder coating or paint. And I don't know what it is. I assume it's powder coated. I know I was able to get the black wheels on the Kawasaki to really come up like a mirror. We, 
with, <clears throat> with the material that I have, but we're going to find out. But again, that's a, that's a future project. Today I want to get that wire in. And of course, when you paint, here's the, here's the whole thing in a nutshell. When you paint wheels, you can put extra, extra clear on so you can buff them, which all these wheels are hand buffed. Well, powder coating, uh, I don't know. And, and I've got to be real careful about my material choice and how much buffing I do because I don't want to go through. But once they're buffed, they should stay buffed for a long time. I think it's going to add a nice little dimension. Yesterday's video was polishing up the exhaust, and boy, I think that made, that made a tremendous difference. So a lot of times when you get a new bike like this, now because this bike, the styling is very modern and, uh, I don't know, they, it's just a modern motorcycle, I guess. But I'm always thinking about how the, the traditional bikes have a totally different look. And every time I restore one of them or paint one of them, I try to take that all into account and maintain that the look that I'm looking for. But this bike is going to be challenging. Over the winter, I don't know what we're going to do. It's going to be a challenge, and I'm still looking for ideas. But the biggest thing is I need to figure out what I'm going to do with this nose section. I don't know. Until I actually saw it in real life, I didn't realize... And I may ultimately, like the, like the back, just have to leave it for a winter project. But, but I want to get that wire in today. And everything with a new bike, this bike is so good. I can't tell you how nice that seat is. Comfortable, smooth. Engine is like an electric motor. And I, ha I haven't leaned on it yet. I haven't gone to the edge of the tires. But it is rock, rock solid. Absolutely rock solid. Step one, of course, just take the seat off. Boy, it's nice when everything's nice and clean and new. Oh my god. Now, I'm, as I'm looking at it, I, this should not be a big problem, but, but again, you never, you never know until you actually do it. Now, just a thought. If I was going to do some custom retro bike, if I was going to try to do a, I don't know, an RD seat or something, something that I wanted to make look a little more modern, that seat is so comfortable. I'd be trying to adapt that in somehow that I don't know what they got in that seat I'm, I'm thinking I should cut it open and see but that's the most comfortable seat I have right now so the little tool kit that comes with the bike but they don't they don't put it in the bike you think it comes and Luciano was a little concerned that we weren't going to get the tool kit and it has the shock adjusting tool and the extension for it which without the extension I'm not sure you'd be able to do it without a, a little bit of effort Anyway, we do need, it's a sealed battery, I do need to get at these, hook up the wire, figure out how to wire it up through the tank. I want it to come out somewhere up here, because once I put, once with the, I'm not going to do it until I get the break-in miles and start riding around the radar detector, because once I have that, I'm going to want to start leaning on it. I know my level of self-control is, well, just look at my gut and you'll see what my self-control is. I also had it, I was going to try to get Don or somebody to come over. We could do this one after and put all the Yamahas out in the driveway and do a nice Yamaha photo shoot before the weather goes bye-bye here. Yeah, it looks like it might be our lucky day that that will go right under there, right under there. Up under there. Without having to take the tank off. Might be our lucky day. I don't want to get too carried away because... <laughs> not our lucky day always that's for sure now I'm looking down there and I'm seeing daylight so what this is is a piece of music wire or coat hanger wire something every modeler has plenty of around and I can fish this right through boy will this be nice taking a tank off of these modern bikes is is a lot more of a job than taking a tank off the RD that's for sure so now what this is called a fish electricians call it a fish anyway We'll see if we can get this wire to come up through there, and that will mean we do not have to take the tank off. Notice I'm doing all this with the wire not connected to the battery, just in case something were to touch something, it were to touch something. And everybody knows how I hate electricity. It always happens to me. Okay, so we're hooked to the fish. Now I hope, if it's my lucky day, that's going to fit through there, or I'm going to have to find another channel that it's going to go in or loosen something up let's see it looks like I can see it through here la, 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 la. that's not going to go through there 
There we go. And that comes out. And now we have the wire where we want it. Do we have enough wire left to reach the battery? It looks like it's going to be perfect. I'm trying to make sure I'm not interfering with anything here. And, and by the way, an interesting thing about this bike I found out uh, in dealing with Partzilla yesterday, I ordered up the oil filters, and they are a unique oil filter. They're not the exact same part number as the R1s. I have a box of them for the R1, but this is a unique, I don't, I don't know, maybe you can interchange them, but I don't want to take a chance that I just spent the money for a new bike. I want it to be perfect. Okay, that, that looks like it couldn't have been any better. So now, let's see, this can go under here. See, I want to be able to see the fuse, and I want to be able to see the, this can go under here. Sometimes this gets to be more of a job than you think it's going to be, and then when you're all done, you go, oh, geez, that should have taken 10 minutes, and it took an hour, so. But I have a split day today. I don't know if I'm even going to get to ride. I'm, I'm assuming not, because usually the reality is when, uh, when we start babysitting miles and things are going on, it's, it's just hard to get excited about a ride. By then it's late in the afternoon and it's way too hot anyway. So I like to ride early in the morning and it's looking like this might be my lucky day. This is going to fit right in there where I can get at the fuse. I can work that up here. Let's see, I can go under there. I'm not used to things going my way this much. <laughs> I, I'm used to when you, something's terrible and you got to do it all the hard way. So it looks like I'm going to have to loosen two bolts here to get the fuse to go underneath through that little tunnel. And then I'm, I'm about an inch short of, I'm actually not even an inch short, I'm, I'm a half inch short, but I don't want to put a stress on the wires. You can see where that doesn't really fit under there and I don't want to force it and I don't want to have these that there's, there's, there's tension on the wire, that's for sure. So may just have to loosen these two screws and I'm home for you all. Let's say I don't even have to, it's these four I have to loosen. In fact, I may only have to loosen one of them. Let's see. I just need to pick that up just enough to slide the fuse box under there. Now sometimes it just is your lucky day and things just fit and some days they're just a 64th of an inch. Boy, is it my lucky day. It is. Now I've got just the right amount of wire showing here. This will be a piece of cake to hook this up. The wire will route under this piece of cosmetic bodywork. You won't even see the wire. And then I just have to figure how I'm going to attach it at the front. Now, what this always allows you to do is have the battery tender on in the winter or when, or in my case, I leave it on all year long. And what happens is, I can just, without having to remove the seat. Now, the, this, the seat on this bike is relatively easy to put on and off, but, but some of the bikes, like the FZR, it's, it's, you gotta take the tail section off, and I, the R1 is a pain to get the seat off. But this will make it, you don't even have to take the seat off. So, it also allows me to plug in the radar detector, and that is, once with the break-in miles are over, that's a must. That's a deal breaker, not to have a radar detector. You may as well just, well, you may as well take the Volkswagen if you're not gonna have a radar detector. So today it actually has the look that it might be my lucky day. And I really do like to have lucky days, but sometimes they're few and far between. I don't know why. I don't know why that is when I'm such a good guy. <laughs> or not. All right, let's get this in there. Let's not be a baby. And once this is hooked up, of course, I'll do a circuit test. Make sure it works. And we're all set. Now to get at the positive terminal, I've got to move some of these electronic connectors around, but, but still, this looks like it's going to work out perfectly and the strap will cover the wire. When this is done, this will be a beautiful installation. Glad I got this done this morning. So it looks like I've got to turn the battery up sideways here because they're using the side connector for whatever reason. Just make it a little trickier. Not a big deal, but... And don't fall over, baby. Don't fall over now. This kid fits into that category of why can't it be easier? OK, 
Okay, now, I don't know why they use the side connector on this. I don't want to be the one to, to try to re-engineer Yamaha stuff. Yamaha stuff is usually really good. So one of the things that happened, as I was trying to put this back into position, I realized this end, this is on the jumper wire that goes up to the radar detector, was really getting, you know, when you bend something back and forth by like a tin can, and it, it popped off. So I thought, no big deal. I'll run downstairs and get one. Well, I didn't have one. So, of course, the next best fun thing, a trip to Harbor Freight. So anytime I go to Harbor Freight, I always look for little stuff that I can use. What this is, this is a great little tool. And what you do, you, you dump all your nuts and bolts in here, and when you want to put them back, so something I'm going to use every day, that's for sure. So anyway, what I did while I was there, I got a whole selection of heat shrink tubings that I've been, my, my inventory is down to almost nothing. I also wanted to get, because I'm going to be doing other wiring projects in the near future, and I wanted to get the, the main thing of all. I got a whole box of connectors, and I needed one of these right now, and like, like everything from Harbor Freight. Let's see if I can, uh, where's it, this, uh, you never know, you never know these Harbor Freight deals. Anyway, and they have some shrink wrap and everything here, and this is, this is the thing, anytime I need to upgrade, in my case I need to upgrade the wiring all the time because I'm on these old motorcycles, there's always connectors going bad. But anyway, I do have plenty of them now, so we'll put a nice fresh connector on, and we'll have fresh heat shrink tubing, and it'll be like brand new. I, I'm glad I ducked a bullet by having this problem now. Not out on the road, we're in the middle of a ride, the radar detector will just stop working. So with new connectors on both ends, that turned out to be a perfect installation now. We got the little rubber strap on the battery. That, that and the wire did not, did not have to take the tank off, which again, saved a lot, of, a lot of time today. So, looks like it was our lucky day and we got some nice new stuff for our tool supply from Harbor Freight. So the last thing is I put a little piece of heat shrink tubing, of course from Harbor Freight, over this. Man, that should, that should be very good. Now I just need to find out where I want to bury that wire in there when I'm not using it. The only thing left to do is see if we have good continuity. And once the bike is broken in, we'll be ready to go. And I am really, I'm going to be patient. The manual calls for a thousand miles, an oil change and a filter. And it, it uses a unique filter. I've ordered three of them from Portzilla. I will, I will test my willpower because I want this bike. This is such a, a bike I like so much. I want to keep it forever. This is my forever bike. Well, all my bikes are forever bikes. It's me that's not the forever part of it. And when I actually start using this, I have that clear plastic material that can you can just protect the tank. I'm not sure how new that paint is, how soft it is. We're going to find out. But I have it on all the other bikes, the little protective uh, clear material. And I got that from Dave Midgley. Thanks, Dave. So the last thing is to put the seat back on. Now, I've learned a couple of tricks about this. Uh, it can be a little tricky. Well, I guess it's not tricky. Every bike is the same. Got to line up the two, two little guys there, and I had to do that about six times before I figured out <laughs> those little tangs have to go right into position. Anyway, boy, that I'm glad that's behind us now. That that's one thing that I had on my priority list to do. Even though we're not going to use the radar detector for a while yet, I want to have that that wire there. So that the day I get my thousand mile, my thousand mile tune up, we right out. So it says in the manual, they're not supposed to wax these matte finished parts, and of course the matte finish is part of the look of this motorcycle. So uh, I'm just using a microfiber and trying to get the bugs off them that way. But I really miss having highly gloss, high gloss parts just clean right up. Matte finish parts, well, but that's the look of this bike, and I don't want, for right now, I don't want to disturb it, so. Actually, the more I work on this bike, and the more I just become friends with it, it's really getting to be a good friend, and that, that I really like. I like this bike, the way it, 
Actually, the number one thing, if I had to be honest, is the comfort. For me, the seating position, the comfort, number one. I know it's got a reasonably powerful motor and we'll get to use that once we get the break-in done, but for right now, there's still things about it. I have to do some homework on this, this little windshield part. And it doesn't look like that, that replacing that license plate thing is gonna be like a, I thought it was gonna be an easy peasy, couple of bolts and stuff. Mm, not because that axle goes right through that part that has to either have to make that bushing or I'm not sure if you buy one of these kits for $175 that they give you that bushing with the axles. And, and then who knows how accurate that is too. So all up in the air, all to come. And that's the whole idea of our sending out videos every day is you get to live the adventure of the MT-10 right along with me as you learn these things. You can share them or not share them or uh, whatever. But it's, it's an adventure. Every one of these bikes is a different adventure, but they're all an adventure. So the day turned out pretty good after all. That wool wired up. My grandson's on his way over here. The last thing I want to mention today is something that I think is the most important thing of the last year. Thank you to all the healthcare workers that have made, that actually made owning this motorcycle possible. Thank you guys, one and all. It is already getting super hot. Miles is on the way over here. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope the fish enjoyed being fed. They had their lunch today. It's just one of those summers that uh, with this virus and everything, I'm glad we're all surviving. Hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoy making them. Hope you enjoy watching them and sharing them. Thanks for watching.